Hello friends, the burning question in the market and on the minds of every viewer of mine is, is it time to buy? Are the bulls back? And is the bearishness done? In this video, I'm going to address that very topic because it is the topic in the market today. I'm Vijay Bambuani. I'm a prop trader since 36 years. And in my video, I'm going to help you trade better, earn more profits and do it all with logic and indicators that you won't find anywhere else on the internet. Let's dive right in and coming up on your screen is the market roundup window, which tells me that it was the banking space that uh, uh, outperformed the market because the bank nifty rose a little under 4%, whereas the nifty 50, thanks to the rise in the last two trading sessions of the week, gained a little over half a percent. Last week, I talked to you about how the US dollar index might just react lower. And there you have it, the dollar index or the Dixie has fallen 1.35%, thereby giving a relief rally across the board to all emerging markets, including India. And it also pushed up commodity prices because the dollar is the invoicing currency. That's where all payments are made in US dollars. And therefore, commodity prices went up, including gold, silver, crude oil, natural gas. The US dollar versus the rupee rose 0.12%. And to that extent, it created a slight pressure on the market because we want a stronger rupee to curb in imported inflation. 10-year benchmark bond yields fell one basis point or 0.14% on the previous year's previous week's base. The NSE market capitalization. Now, this is a crucial aspect that you must monitor. The NSE market capitalization fell almost three quarters of a percent. So do remember the headline indices are up, but the market cap is down, which tells you that the broader market has not really participated in the upthrust as much as the index heavyweight stocks have. So remember that. And in this video towards the fag end, there is a special chapter which I have recorded, which is called summation, a brief summation of whether it is actually time to buy or not. The MWPL fell off and that's pretty normal because uh, uh, it was an expiry week and uh, uh, normally uh, not every trader wants to roll over his trades to the next uh, settlement. So MWPL or market wide position limits do tend to fall. The overseas markets have recorded uh, uh, pullbacks in, in spite of the death crosses that uh, I have discussed with you in uh, my previous week's videos. And let's uh, uh, check the uh, uh, daily chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, in front of you. It's seen a gain on all five out of five trading sessions and it's now at its uh, 25 uh, uh, a week uh, exponential, 50 week exponential moving average. Now, it is very normal after a death cross to basically see a pullback rally. No uh, rally or decline goes up or down one sided without any corrections in between. So it's not really a surprise that uh, uh, the Dow has seen a pullback. We can only call it a reversal after the previous swing high at 35,500 level has been overcome successfully. But can it go to the 200 day moving average close to 34,000 in all probability? Yes, it's still not a bull market in the US again. The Nasdaq. Uh, the daily chart of the Nasdaq shows uh, uh, a decline on four uh, on a rally of on four out of five trading sessions. The uh, uh, bottom made on Tuesday was on a hammer and that basically is likely to be a rough and ready support for now at the 11,600 levels on the Nasdaq uh, uh, 100 index. Here again, this index might just rise towards its uh, uh, 50 day moving average. And that would still be OK. The death cross would still be valid and it would be a bear market pullback rally at best. The S&P 500, uh, uh, like the Nasdaq and the uh, uh, Dow Jones before it, has also seen a death cross and has risen on four out of five trading sessions last week. And 
the pullback rally is uh, uh, basically coming back to kiss its 50-day uh, moving average. And uh, it's still early days yet because the S&P 500 would need to cross the 4,400 mark before you can call it an outright buy scenario. Friends, the US market indice is done. I now come uh, to our in-house uh, uh, indicators that you won't find anywhere else on the internet. We start uh, uh, with the MWPL or the market wide position limits. Now, this is the absolute exposure taken by traders as compared to the maximum exposure permitted by SEBI. What you are seeing on the daily chart is the MWPL fell to a multi-month low of 18.27 on expiry day before climbing to 19.64. Now the MWPL normally falls on expiry. No, no big deal. It is routine. But how much it falls definitely makes a difference. So the two marshmallow traders were showing lack of buying conviction. The marshmallow theory is in a video which uh, uh, the hyperlink to which is in uh, the description in a pinned comment below this video. It will come as a uh, 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 kind of uh, end screen at the end of this video as well. So up to the third week of the derivative cycle, MWPL does tend to rise. But how much does it fall makes a difference. And do remember, it's peaked out at 27.73. I've been telling you since weeks that the days of 32, 33 and 34% MWPL are gone after December 2021. Risk appetite is definitely lower. Why is this happening? Have you really thought why is this happening? Because the charts and the market watchers do not tell you the complete picture. The complete picture is a bull who buys long in the futures and carries over his trade for three, four or five derivative cycles would have incurred a few percentage points in carry cost, execution cost, commissions and taxes. He will calculate his entire execution cost and then see his average price. That is not reflected in the charts. So the picture appears to be less damaging than it actually is for a trader. If you're, if you're really a doer of deeds, you will know what I mean. The weekly chart of MWPL paints a similar picture. We are basically seeing the post expiry dip to be the uh, biggest in three months. This remember is Friday, not of Thursday. Thursday is the expiry that the daily chart would have told you. But even on a Friday to Friday basis, we are down to 19.64, which is the lowest after March 2022. Let's take a stock and index futures turnover, friends. This is a cumulative uh, uh, a turnover figure of uh, three derivative series. So it's uh, 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 June, July and August. Now, basically what you're seeing is the day to day turnover has fallen on Friday. This is routine because on Thursday or in a build up towards Thursday, the turnover does shoot up. Do remember you are squaring up your uh, exposure in the month of May and rolling it over to the month of June. So to the exchange, to the market, it is double turnover. There is turnover in the prompt month and there's a turnover in the next month. So it's very natural to see turnover rise ahead of expiry. But the decline post expiry and that too on a day when the market was extremely bullish is remarkable. This is not the kind of decline that should have occurred on a bullish market day where the nifty has risen in three digits. What happens on a, a, a weekly turnover chart? Remember this again is a cumulative turnover figure prompt mid and next month futures. Both are showing a week on week decline. This again tells you that one marshmallow traders, the marshmallow theory, like I told you, is covered in hyperlinks uh, in the description and in the pinned comment below this video. We've got you covered. Don't worry. So the one marshmallow traders along with two marshmallow traders are showing a lack of conviction. This is concerning me. This is a small red flag as far as I'm concerned. Now the basis. Basis is a two marshmallow gauge of risk appetite and the two marshmallow guys aren't looking too happy. Let's face it. 
What is the basis? It is a premium or discount enjoyed by the future as compared to spot. And that is telling me that traders are not happy in paying too much of a premium on the Nifty. The Nifty is a broader based index and therefore more relevant as compared to the Bank Nifty because the Bank Nifty is a sectoral index. Even the Bank Nifty uh, basis has fallen to 18.40. Do remember for an index which is uh, trading at 35,000 odd levels, a mere premium of 18 points that too on a day after expiry is a small red flag. And as far as the Nifty is concerned, the basis has remained zero for nine consecutive trading sessions and that to me is a sign of worry. Why? Because an average bear is willing to press shorts even at a discount. He is actually getting a negative cost of carry. He is being penalized for shorting but guess what? He is pressing shorts still. So this is another small red flag but a small one. Do stick around with me till the summation chapter in this video at the fag end and we'll sum this all up. Now the weekly chart of the basis tells you the same picture. Uh, uh, the uh, basis continued to fall for the second week in a row where the nifty is concerned and where the bank nifty is concerned the basis is back above zero and not very surprising since it was a banking space that uh, saw all the action and the buying which is why the basis is positive in the uh, bank nifty will it continue probably probably yes i'm giving you more supporting evidence in the coming charts let's now see the advanced decline ratio for the last two trading sessions which is thursday and friday which incidentally are the only days the nifty rose the advanced decline ratio was above one we want this to be above one in case the bullishness is to sustain. All right. So the advanced decline ratio being above one on Thursday and Friday is still not anywhere near the peak that it has seen off late on the daily chart. So it's showing signs of some kind of a pullback, which could also be a short squeeze, a forcible squeezing of short sales by the bulls, by the bears, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, triggered by excessive buying by bulls. Now the weekly chart of uh, advanced decline ratio tells me that uh, uh, the 4.74% uh, advanced decline ratio that was seen last week proved to be unsustainable and that is something that I had told you would prove to be unsustainable because these are not levels that uh, bulls can even one marshmallow bulls can actually hold on to. So do keep a very, very keen eye on these numbers, on these figures. I update them on my social media account every single day. Do connect with me on social media. My contact coordinates will come at the fag end of this video. We, we help you out with uh, uh, updates via WhatsApp on our, our Telegram channel. All the contact coordinates are there at the end of this video. Now, friends, another weight of evidence that I am very, very concerned about the impetus. Now, what worries me about the impetus is that in spite of the fact that the Nifty has risen a little around half percent on a week on week basis, the impetus has fallen on each and every single day of the week. Whereas the bank Nifty has risen with a rising impetus. So to that extent, the Nifty is not showing any sign of recovery immediately unless the price and the impetus along with the advanced decline ratio rise together. So the broader market is still down, which was pointed out even by the market capitalization, which fell in spite of both the headline indices rising. All right. That's another weight of evidence that tells me that there is a small red flag. Let's now see the impetus on the weekly chart. Here again, you're seeing that the nifty impetus has fallen for the second consecutive week in a row, whereas the bank nifty impetus has risen. Now, this weekly chart spans over 20 weeks, four and a half months. The nifty's impetus is now hitting the lower end of the four and a half month. 
period. I have often told you in my past videos, don't mistake a, a falling impetus hitting a, a near a low of a period as a positive or negative sign because it tends to bounce back. And when it bounces back, volatility will jump through the roof. So be very careful in the nifty. You can see large and sudden moves. I'm not saying in the up or down direction, wherever it goes, it can go with very sharp uh, uh, volumes and price movements. It can catch you on the wrong foot. That is what this impetus chart is warning me. And this divergence between both the indices is not healthy at all. Now for the LWTD indicator, it's something that you depend on so heavily and so do I. The uh, daily LWTD chart, which means this is an outlook only for Monday, tells me that the Nifty may have flatlined where the percentage gain loss uh, line in, uh, indicated in blue is uh, telling me. But the LWTD has fallen a tad. It was at zero on Thursday. It is now minus 0 0.08. So the LWTD is marginally lower, which tells me that on Monday, all other things remaining constant at higher levels, you might see some profit taking coming in. The price remains up, no, no, no denying that. There's no dispute with that at all. But the LWTD is not supporting the price. Now the weekly chart of LWTD, that tells me that uh, the index, the nifty percentage gain or loss on a week on week basis has fallen. But the LWTD, which was deep in inversion territory, in the minus territory, has attempted to rise towards the zero line. So the coming week on a week on week basis might see resistance to big ticket declines on the nifty. This is the chart of the Nifty. Do remember that. So where the price is concerned, that's showing heaviness. But where LWTD is concerned, that's showing signs of resisting decline. So neither the upsides are going to be very huge, nor the downsides are appearing to be sizable. This could be a day where the net day on day closing might not be very big. So all the price action might be intraday volatility and that is something retail traders, my friends, need to be particularly careful about. Now, friends, I come to the four market participants and their footprints in the digital market space. I start with the FII's who've continued to increase their uh, bullish outlook where individual stock futures are concerned. They've raised their net long position substantially where index shorts are concerned. They've cut their shorts substantially, which tells me that in the future space, at least they are holding an optimistic view as compared to the week gone by. Where DIIs or domestic investment institutions are concerned, they've uh, uh, basically shown signs of caution. Their index net short positions in the futures has risen and their net short positions in index uh, individual stock futures has fallen marginally marginally so that tells me that they're not really going very gung-ho in the market either now where the prop traders are concerned this is interesting because these are brokers own proprietary trades they know who's buying and selling at what price and how much so they are second best to insiders. The prop traders have cut their individual stock futures long positions substantially. I'm willing to give them a benefit of the doubt that this was an expiry week and therefore some amount of uh, position uh, 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 dumping might have occurred. So let's watch this figure. But where the index is concerned, they've increased their net long positions substantially on the index futures. So what I need to watch is whether these guys are biting the bait where individual stock futures net longs are concerned. Now, my friends, the retail segment. Do remember, this is the segment that has done all the heavy lifting so far in the market. And they are holding the largest amount of futures in absolute numerical terms. So their buying and selling 
can make a huge amount of difference in the market. And the retail segment is appearing to be tired. They've reduced their individual stock futures and index uh, 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 futures, net long positions substantially on a week on week basis, not just for one week, but three weeks in a row. And like I said, their holding is the largest and therefore their unwinding is making the highest amount of difference as far as the price is concerned. Friends, I now come to the bond market. This is quite simply the most relevant market for this week for the simple reason that the RBI governor has basically given contrarian indications in the media last week. You see, in the initial interviews, in the initial uh, uh, part of the week, he gave interviews saying that rate hikes are a no-brainer. They are a given in the coming MPC meet. It's just how much of a rate hike will be implemented is what needs to be determined. But in the latter part of the week, he has given a kind of a unsure uh, a kind of an outlook saying, look, we need to increase the interest rates but just how much is not something that we've determined so far, which is why a late rally occurred in the equity markets on Thursday and Friday in the Nifty. I believe in a 360 degree worldview system of trading in the markets. And uh, uh, unless there is a cause and effect uh, uh, understanding of the market as to what caused the market to go up or go down, you will not be able to know how long the effect will last. So do try to be curious about the cause and effect theory. In the latter half of the week, the market went up because the RBI governor said we may or may not increase interest rates. We are unsure. And the market basically got a fresh lease of life. Also remember the US dollar index has fallen. That was another positive trigger. So on a week on week basis, the uh, uh, Daily chart of the 10-year benchmark bond yield uh, uh, tells you that there's little change. One basis point change, not really too much. And therefore, uh, the banking space took uh, positive cues from this development. And no wonder the bank nifty outperformed the nifty 50 last week. Friends, the bond yields done. I now come to the US dollar index, the Dixie as it is popularly known as. This is a very critical aspect of the market because uh, uh, the dollar index impacts the emerging market area as fast as nothing else can. Because India, uh, like many other emerging markets uh, around it, are net importers and anything that's imported and the dollar is strong results in the price, landed price of those goods rising. And this calls what is known as imported inflation. Typically, the effect is devastating in fossil fuels, crude oil and natural gas. That being, uh, those two being multiplier commodities, the, the inflation really runs through the roof. So uh, uh, the US dollar index falling, like I told you last week in my video, that the price has run up too much, too far ahead of its uh, exponential moving averages, might react to 100 odd levels, has come down and lived up to my expectations. So the price has fallen on four out of five trading sessions, which uh, you can see on the daily chart on your screen. The price has fallen below its 25 day exponential moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull, which tells me that the short term outlook is appearing a bit nervous as of now. When will the outlook revive? When the price starts to trade above the 102.50 levels on a sustained closing basis. Now let's check out the weekly chart on your screen. It tells me that for the second consecutive week, there was a big bearish red candle in a row and Remember this gap between its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month holding on cost of an average bull and the price told me that the price had run up too much, too fast and it needs to correct and come to the moving average itself. So that process is still on. 
and don't be surprised if the 100 mark is tested or violated slightly but the medium term outlook still remains positive the price is still making higher highs and higher lows and unless the trend line is breached i would not really bother about uh, calling it a bear market so friends last week i uh, uh, advocated levels between 104.55 on the upside and 101.50 on the downside which held more or less because the low was 101.46 i missed it by 0 0.04 points in the coming week i expect a range between 103.20 on the upside and 100.10 on the downside friends the dollar index done i now come to the bank nifty and this is going to be in the eye of uh, uh, the center of attraction rather because the closer we get towards the monetary policy committee meeting the more you are going to see traders trying to second guess as to what the honorable rbi governor is likely to do are they going to raise rates are they not going to raise rates if they are going to raise rates is it going to be an aggressive rate hike or they are going to wait and watch for now so the action is likely to remain concentrated on the nifty which as a bank nifty i'm sorry which as you can see on your daily chart rose on four out of five trading sessions and it gained 3.90 percent this was a hope driven rally because uh, uh, it was expected that the rbi may go easy on interest rate hikes or may not even hike so what you are seeing is that the index has broken above its 25 day exponential moving average which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull and between the nifty and the bank nifty it is the bank nifty which has come above its 25 day exponential moving average so where a buy is concerned like the title of this video thumbnail was is it time to buy where a buy is concerned a trading buy remember it's different from an investment buy a trading buy may be possible in the bank nifty and some stocks in the banking space the short term outlook has just turned positive but it's a high risk positive a trading positive and not an outright investment grade positive let's now take a look at the weekly chart where we see a second consecutive week of a bullish candle and the price is still below its 25 week exponential moving average which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull so the medium term outlook though has improved marginally still remains somewhat under pressure i would want the bank nifty to cross 37000 levels and trade above it sustainably before i could go out there and say okay the bearishness is over and possibly the bulls are back so it's early days yet let's not bring out the champagne let's not uh, really celebrate uh, let's not count our uh, 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 chickens before they are hatched now uh, uh, as far as uh, the uh, bank nifty's volatility is concerned in the week before last it was at number 6 on the most volatile list on the nse but last week it moved up two notches to go to number 4 now that is a concern and index which is moving to number four on the most volatile list tells you that the retail guy is going to get chopped both ways bull and bear because prices will change direction at the snap of a finger and you need to be extremely careful you need to be extremely accomplished skilled gutsy and cool headed to be able to trade a market which is at number four in volatility so let's be careful out there my friends Last week, I advocated a range between 36,050 on the upside and 32,500 on the downside, which held perfectly well. Not really too much of uh, a credit to me, but uh, uh, the market was somewhat calmer last week. So uh, the ranges were respected by the market. In the coming week, I expect a, a range between 37,375 on the upside and 33,850 on the downside friends i now come to the nifty 50 the most liquid uh, derivative instrument on the uh, uh, nse derivative segment 
which gained 0.53% on a week on week basis. It rose only on two out of five trading sessions, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen, which was Thursday and Friday. But the rallies were good enough to take the index into positive where week on week closing was concerned. The uh, uh, price remains below its 25 day exponential moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull. So uh, overhead supply is still remaining. Do, do remember that the impetus of the Nifty remains sliding downwards. So the upthrust was not something that was really backed by the impetus chart and the market capitalization itself remains negative. It, it fell last week. So net net, the Nifty is still relatively speaking compared to the bank Nifty still under pressure. Where the weekly chart is concerned, we see a very small bullish candle, a hammer, a bullish hammer on the chart coming after a big uh, bullish uh, candle in the prior week. This seems to be more of a breather. The bulls are pausing for breath. They seem to be running into a wall of resistance. And like the daily chart itself, the weekly chart shows that the price is below its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. So the medium term outlook remains cautious for now. We are not yet out of the woods, which we will be provided we start trading above the 17,100, 17,200 levels on a sustained closing basis to be on the safer side. Friends, in the week before last, this index was number nine on the most volatile list and it fell four notches to uh, uh, come down to number 13. It's not that the volatility of the Nifty has fallen too much. It's just that individual stock volatility has risen substantially and the bank Nifty's volatility, of course, has outpaced the Nifty 50. So it's not yet uh, uh, time to take the Nifty lightly because uh, here again, Price movement can be absolutely patchy, sporadic and sudden. So let's be careful out there. And last week, I advocated a range between 16,900 on the upside and 15,625 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I expect um, a range between 17,000 round figure on the upside and 15,700 on the downside. Why the wide range? Because uh, uh, the volatility or statistical beta of the Nifty has risen on a week on week basis. And therefore, uh, uh, I'm basically playing uh, uh, by the uh, statistical data thrown out by our in-house statistical model, the IBEX. So friends, in the coming week, you must be absolutely careful and the following parameters need to be watched with a, a, a extreme amount of uh, attention. Where statistical beta is concerned, spreads between the bid and offer on your snap quote window. I've talked to you about the snap quote window multiple times. This is your trader's cockpit. You must learn the signals that are shown by the price on the snap quote window or else you are trading like a handicapped trader. The basis, which is the discount or premium enjoyed by the futures over cash. This is something I update on my social media accounts every day. The impetus chart. The advanced decline ratio, again, I update this on my uh, social media accounts every day. LWTD, again, a daily update and stay eagle eyed on all these parameters. It's time to be cautious and do catch the summation of uh, uh, the question that whether we should be buying or not at the end of this video. Friends, the indices is done. I now come to the most popular segment of the market where I give you five stocks which are high beta, high impetus, where you take small exposure, wait for large price moves and five stocks which are low beta, low impetus, where you take big exposure and take part in small price moves. These are for scalpers. Why the difference? Because uh, uh, different traders, different mindsets, different aptitudes and attitudes. And hey, therefore, even the strategies must differ. So I start with the high beta list, which is led by a B capital at number one idea at number two, number three, RT industries, number four, a B F R L number five, Ambuja cement, the low beta, low impetus, uh, 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 stock list is led by MRF 
at number one. Number two, Honeywell Automation. Number three, Aisha Motors. Number four, Punjab National Bank. And number five, Apollo Tires. Now, friends, this list is valid only for Monday. Tuesday through Friday, I will be putting this list up on our Telegram channel. Do connect with me on Telegram. Uh, my contact coordinates come at the fag end of this video, also in the description and a pinned comment uh, uh, below this video itself. So do connect. We have a lot of uh, uh, real time during market uh, uh, support to our uh, uh, followers on Telegram. And this hierarchy changes from hour to hour, day to day of the most volatile and least volatile stocks. So this needs to constant updates, which is why we are uh, updating it uh, for you every day rather than updating it, updating it just once a week, which we used to do till a few weeks ago. Now, friends, for the special segment, uh, uh, the summation, which I promised you I would record for you. Am I bullish? Temporarily as a trader who would buy for intraday, I might be selectively bullish. I might play on the long side, but do remember more often than not, I'm a micro trend trader. A micro trend trader is somebody who uh, uh, opens a trade, initiates a trade and wants to square it up ideally within 59 minutes and 59 seconds, which means one hour. So would I buy? Yes, I might buy because the bulls are appearing to creep up but it's mostly bear covering. It's still a bear covering rally. And the impetus chart is not supporting the bull market. The LWTD is not really supporting a raging bull market. It is very common in a bear market to have corrective advances. It's a very strong uh, bear market advance. I'll grant you that it's a strong advance, but I'm still not convinced that it's an outright reversal. So if you're looking out for long term delivery based buying, maybe you might want to be a little more patient for traders. Yes, but do remember the risks are extremely high. The two gauges of risk, the Jensen's measure and the trainer ratio, which I will swear by because uh, a couple of years down the line when uh, BSPL India has its own in house hedge fund and high frequency trading desk, we are going to use the the trainer ratio and the Jensen's measure, measure every trade, which we still do even now in our statistical models. So they are still not telling me that it's a blind buy and forget and sleep tight kind of a market. This is the summation. Let's be careful out there. Friends, before I bid goodbye to you in this video, a gentle reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. Good, bad or ugly, I love to hear from you in the comments section and help me reach out to fellow smart investors and traders like yourself by referring my video to your family and friends. I thank you for your patience and being with me in this video till we meet again in my next. This is Vijay Bambwani signing off for now. Have a very, very profitable week ahead. Bye-bye and thank you.